What makes a good HMO property deal? Well, in this video, we're going to take you through a detailed analysis of a 15 room HMO project in Swindon. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Ranjan Bhattacharya. Welcome to this channel. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon because we put out new content each and every week. Now, I've been investing in property for 30 years. So I've done a couple of videos on HMOs, in particular, uh, the five pitfalls that you need to take into account of before getting into HMO property investing. And I've also done one comparing HMOs with doing single let. So I'll put the links here, but watch them afterwards. So now we're going to get on and have a look at this 15 room HMO project in Swindon. Now, what I'm about to show you is a uh, clip. Well, it's not a clip. It's actually a whole excerpt from a property um, elevator pitch. Now, Property Elevator is the hit Sky TV show uh, where it's a bit like Dragon's Den or Shark Tank. V uh, people come on and pitch their property deals and there are five property angels on the show. I'm one of them. And uh, people pitch their project to us for funding. Now, this particular deal that we're going to have a look at now didn't actually get on the show. The reason it didn't get on the show was that um, actually there was quite a lot of analysis involved and it was quite difficult to cut down to size um, to meet the sort of time slot requirements for the show. So that's why you're getting to see this uh, here and now and it's quite an interesting pitch. So Cam and Joe came uh, on the show to pitch a particular deal which is basically to take a former um, care facility and convert it into a 15 room HMO. They got their funding, they got their funding, but there were uh, all the five angels asked very, very pertinent questions uh, about the project and about the viability of the project. And that's really where the learning comes from. And that's really what you should uh, sort of sort of listen to and take some notes, take some notes because it's all useful stuff. Remember, if you appreciate this video, show us by liking, uh, like it because it means more people like you will get to see this video and subscribe if you haven't already done so. So let me hand over to Elizabeth Ward Warburton, who's presenter of the show, who uh, meets Cam and Joe, and you'll get to see the pitch as it, uh, as it was filmed. Uh, for the TV programme. See you guys soon. Okay, so I'm with Cam and Joe today who travelled from Marlborough. Guys, tell us a little bit about your deal today. Well, it's a ex-residential institution for people with learning difficulties. Okay. And um, we have a vision to turn it into a large 15-bed HMO. Okay, that's pretty big. In Swindon, yeah. We've got a, um, a reasonable design standard, so we're trying to sort of raise the bar a little bit of um, how HMOs are, are done and um, uh, so Joe's got a design background. Okay, um, that's always an advantage. Yeah, it's very useful, it's very useful. Nice, yeah. so how much are you looking for today? Uh, we're looking for an investment of 250,000 um, and that will cover the purchase costs and the stamp duty. Yeah. We're, we're going to cover the refurb costs ourselves. Okay. So uh, it'll be a bit of a combined uh, deal between us and the investor, hopefully, or the angel investor. Um, and yeah, we're looking forward to it very much. Great, well, good luck. I think it's just about time for you guys to head in. Okay, so this is Joe and Cam's deal they're bringing to us today. It's a 15 bed HMO they've just got planning on. It's currently uh, bed and breakfast, but they have got planning to now convert it into uh, the 15 bedroom HMO. So, shall we uh, get the guys in? Yeah. Yep, looking forward Let's to this. this. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Cam and Joe, thank you very much for coming today. We do really appreciate people bringing deals to us rather than us having to chase around the country trying to find them ourselves. So, that's great. It saves a lot of petrol and the economy and everything else. Now, um, tell me a bit about yourselves, please. Uh, I'm Cam Price. Um, I'm, uh, I'm a New Zealander. i um, been over here for about 12 years now uh, with my wife and now two little daughters. Um, I've got a background in um, equine nutrition, so I own an equine nutrition company, um, and uh, so I'm MD of that. Um, but uh, Joe and I um, have been partnered now for about 18 months or so. Um, and uh, now we're forging on with the property journey um, and both enjoying it very much. 
I'm Joe, Joe Weeks, and I am a user experience designer by day for a large telco. And I am staying in a similar situation to Cam, um, although I'm not from New Zealand, but um, we have similar uh, k kids the same age, um, literally days apart. Um, sort of how we came together actually, sort of bumped into each other in the hospital and um, started <laughs> talking about stuff. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, and it's like 18 months later, and here we are. It's been a bit of a whirlwind. But um, yeah, we're both property enthusiasts. And um, since we started the company, it's really just been gone from strength to strength. And we just really enjoy everything about property. So it's a lovely side hobby to have, I'd say. Yeah. What worries me, you say hobby. That worries Not me hobby. It's, it's my... I... I would probably prioritise it over my day job, definitely. Yeah. But at the moment, at this moment in time, I can't just give up my day job, no, and, and I'm not going to rush into doing that. That's a very, 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 very wise. So let's kick off with. Do um, you want to tell us something about uh, about the deal, about how you came about it, and and why you're so interested in buying it? Yes. Um, so this deal is a ex-residential home, and it, we have a vision to turn it into a 15-bed HMO. It's based in Swindon, which is pretty much on our doorstep. It's about 10 to 15 minutes away from where we live. We, live, we both live in Marlborough in Wiltshire. And we've, we've had, we have a HMO up north in Barnsley as well. And um, we, we saw this deal and the fact that it's on our doorstep and the fact that it's such a good deal. We, we know the area so well. It's on one of the best roads in Swindon. Um, and we just, we really like the property and we see a lot of potential there. So we'll get back to the video shortly, but I just wanted to mention that we're filming series three of Property Elevator in the first week in July. If you've got a deal, any type of property deal, and you're looking for funding, you're looking for backing for that project, then apply to be on the show. You'll raise your profile, you'll get funding, and you'll have a lot of fun. Uh, so to get on the show, Simply visit this link at the bottom and we'll put you in touch with the show's producers. Do it now. Was it on the market or did you, how did you come across the venue? Uh, it was on the market with an estate agent. We, we originally were focusing in the north and looking at higher yielding um, property up there, but um, we've recently slightly adjusted our strategy, still with the HMOs, but looking further south and in particular the southwest. Um, to try and uh, garner some of the interest that London has in the southwest and people sort of migrating that way a little bit as well. So the interest is going up as far as we can see, the demand is going up for this type of housing. Um, so we wanted to thought we thought it was on our doorstep, capital values are higher, but we build the capital value into the, into the deal and it looks, looks even better after five or ten years. And you say demand is going up, what have you done? How, how do you know there is demand for, for this particular product in this particular area? I guess because it's on our doorstep, um, we know quite a network of people in Swindon and the business people that are there, um, some recruitment agents for example that are quite busy with um, placing people in places for transfers of jobs and things like that. We aim to give it a really high standard. Um, my wife's actually an interior designer as well, so we've also got a good arsenal of um, contacts for nice furniture and finishings and labour. So. The, the photo CGI's because it looks like it's done already. I mean, it's very good quality. No. <laughs> well, this is the that's how it is. Yeah. It's all set up with en suites already. It's been maintained till very recently. Um, we were surprised when we looked around it. Anything which should look like it could have been broken has been replaced and fixed. Um, the refurb, hence the low cost of the refurb for such a large property, is mainly cosmetic. Um, there's a reconfig of four rooms, I think. And that's it. Just to make them a bit bigger yeah. and just make them a bit more comfortable to live in and to meet the standard regs as well from the HMO licensing. Um, so just as a summary of the schedule of works, are you replacing any bathrooms or is it literally there's just... There's four en suites. Um, two of them we're going to replace and two new ones. Have you given any thought to maintaining its existing use? as opposed to going for private sector HMO rentals? It's not something we know about, but obviously we'd be open to... Because what I was... Um, I, I mean, I, d I don't know what the market is in that area, mm -hmm. but um, one thing about the HMO market is you've got the gross rent, uh, which of course assumes pretty much full occupancy, plus you've got the management costs and all of that. 
uh, whereas with the care as your tenant, it would likely to be one tenant with one rent payment. Yes. Um, yeah. And they would be responsible for a lot of the internal sort of day to day. It might be an option to increase the net returns on this project if there's a market for that use in that area. Of course, we don't know why the old people packed it up, whether yeah. it was just yeah, we're not sure if it's viable or not viable. Or we're not sure. No, it's, I mean, it's a yeah, very good point. I would say that I've, I've recently sold a, a block of 14 flats to a, um, an investment company who, who rent them to a charity, and the charity are funded by the local authority, uh -huh. and they put in um, adults that need, need some assistance and care, and they have a, a manager in there. And, and you know these local authorities are responsible for these young people who yes. uh, have got issues, and it's costing the, them an absolute fortune to house them. Um, a very sad situation, but it may well be one that if you talk to one or two housing associations um, initially, or even the council initially, you might find that's another angle because they'll take it off you maybe for five years, yeah. fixed rent, yeah. you know, repair it, and so on. Yeah. It might be easier. Than, than, than what you're suggesting. However, what I like about this is you've got two or three different options. Sure. And I think yeah. with any deal, if you've got two or three options, it, it, you know, if one doesn't work, then you can go on to the second one sometimes. Yeah. Um, Helen, do you any sort of more thoughts on what we've said so far? Absolutely, I love that. And that to have more than one exit strategy is always a wonderful thing, absolutely. So you have one, what, um, an HMO already in Barnsley that you mentioned. Who manages that for you? We have a local management company managing it for us right. um, and it's going really well. We only hear from them once at the end of every month when they send a statement. Um, if there's, they very rarely trouble us, it's only at the last minute. So we're really pleased with how it's going from a hmm. passive income point of view. Right, and who, who would manage this? Uh, again, we'd have a local management agency running it from an HMO point of view. And you've identified them or, or that's sort of be determined? To, to be honest, we haven't no identified them. Yeah. Right. Okay. We did want them to be involved in the sort of deal, deal pack, I suppose, so that they can give some ratification to the, to the, the demand in the area and that sort of thing. Um, yeah. We just haven't quite got to that stage. The, off, the offer was accepted last week. Okay. And, uh, and so it's all... Perfect timing, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. Perfect timing. Yeah. You guys came to well <laughs> <laughs> And in terms of the purchase price, how do you know that that's a good purchase price? It stacks up for us commercially. So if we, if okay. we look at, if we look at it on, on yields and, and, and look at the potential upside for us, it, work, it works. Yeah. We originally wanted to go in a bit lower, naturally, as you do, but there was another couple of uh, offers that were on the table. They weren't as attractive to the vendors as ours was. Right. Um, so we had to go a bit higher, but then we re-crunched the numbers, worked it back through, and it was, it was no problem. It's still a good deal. And so we thought, okay, that's, that, we're happy with that. Um, obviously, the surveys will throw up any issues that might be there with undervaluation or something like that, but we don't expect it to. Can I, can I drill down possibly please on your bill costs? Have you considered, uh, are there any fireworks that need re require, requiring to be done? Fire, fire, fire doors and fire, that sort of thing? Yeah, fire precautions. It's, it's, it's pretty well equipped at the moment, to be honest. Yeah. It's, it's had it's those considerations. It's not really what I asked. Sorry. Um, it's, it, it's sort of what I asked, but isn't really the answer I wanted, to be fair. The question, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the, 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 when you go for planning permission, obviously um, it then triggers a building regulation approval uh, application for any works that need doing. Yeah. And some of those works, the building regulations change all the time. They get harder and harder and harder, tougher to, to, to do. And obviously, but fire is very, very, very important. You need to get a fire certificate on this at the end of the day. And obviously quite often soundproofing as well is being updated. So my question is, in that 60,000, have, have you allowed any money for fire and soundproofing? And if you haven't, have you not done so because it doesn't, you've found out that it doesn't need upgrading? When we viewed the property, we checked all of the fire doors were fire doors, and they all were. Um, there's a large plant room in the basement, which um, where all the sort of main plant is, and I, we haven't allowed for that cost. We are working with an architect who has submitted, he says 90% of the HMOs in Swindon, so he knows the regulations inside out, and he actually lives about two minutes away from the property. He's actually there today doing an initial viewing. Um, so we're working closely with him okay, so to make the, sure the, all goes smoothly. 
it's so easy to, to think, great, we're all set to go, you get it all done, your wife does the most beautiful job yeah. of, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, so we dressing. all want to live there if we could. Yeah. So that's all fine, and I understand that, and I think, you know, um, that's great, but you need to make sure that you can get your licence or whatever is required. Yeah. Um, obviously, if there was a fire and there's a problem and it wasn't quite as it should be, yeah. you know, that's a very, very serious manslaughter job. So, my advice to you is to go back and make sure that you have got all the necessary building reg approval yeah. and that you adhere to those to the to the to the point. Yeah. Okay, we'll take that on board. Yeah, Thank that's a good much. point. I just yeah. want to ask a question about the planning permission that you got granted. Um, it's dated two thousand and three, which is valid for five years. So, so this it, it, has, it has this actually. Is there actually current planning permission for the change of use? No. No, for the change of use, no. So we'd have to go through planning. So it has That's to. We've so got so okay. Yep. So okay. The, the current use that went bust is that a B and B or is this the twelve it's beds the, too generous? The twelve beds. Yeah, so this is a, uh, this was implemented. Yeah. But it's there's nothing been implemented since. No, this is change of use from bed and breakfast. Yeah. yeah. To, to the student store. Oh right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah so it's now currently. Okay. Okay. So we don't have planning for the intended no. use that has okay. gotcha. right. so no. our understanding is that's the current use class that, yeah. that, that yeah. you're looking yeah. at yeah. Generous. Yeah. so yeah. Generous. you're looking to go from 12 to 15 beds which will require another planning app exactly yeah because yeah. this explicitly states doesn't it that so you that, that shouldn't exceed 12 beds yeah. Yeah. that will trigger any new building, building control building absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. And maybe you may need to look at that and yeah. go actually yeah. we might be better off with the tw keeping it at yes 12. yeah i'm not yes. saying that is the case yeah. but no, you're you quite know, right. You, we just, have you just need a, a building surveyor just to make sure. Architects are great. They make lovely drawings. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right? But what <laughs> my experience of architects yeah. is once, you've, <laughs> once they've done all that, shake the hand, thank them very much, yeah. and go and get a building surveyor who will do a schedule of works for you so you know exactly what's required and he'll know the up-to-date regs. Sure, brilliant. Yeah. We yeah. feel the property has ample parking, um, has a plot behind at the back of the garden with separate access as well. Has it? Um, which is also of interest at a later date. Um, but that's just, uh, we feel that would help with the HMO being made larger for access and parking. Are, are we saying it's, it, you, you've bought it, you've agreed the price subject to planning permission? Yeah. So you've got three or four, they're giving you six months to get planning or whatever it might be? I don't think you've agreed no, that. No, not don't, six don't, months. Don't, don't you so. choose your words carefully. Okay. You've, you've, jump, you've had an offer accepted, okay. Okay. not we've subject to planning, yeah. haven't you? Okay. You've just yeah. agreed to purchase it, end of. Yeah. And actually, to be fair to you, Looking at this planning permission, so would I. You know, I don't see too much problem with it. Um, Paul, do you want to look at some of, the, some of these figures? Because you're yes. quite bright. Yeah, we can, we can look at figures. Just one thing that I just wanted to get off my mind <laughs> while I'm thinking of it. Um, one red flag that went off when I saw Swindon is we have some clients based in Swindon, and you probably know it much better than any of us because you're locals. Honda's laid off a lot of work, a lot of staff in Swindon uh, over the last 12 months, and I think it's continuing. 7,000 or something, that must be one of the major employers in the area. Yeah. How's that going to affect something like this? Unemployment rates you sort of referring well, to? Well, rising unemployment rates yeah. in general in the economy, but in Sweden before this hit, there yes. was already rising unemployment. So yes. how's that going to affect a, a deal like this? Well, you would expect that, okay, there's going to be a bit of easing off of um, perhaps demand in the professional market. People are out of jobs, you know, that's, um, but that's, you know, probably widely spread through the country for different reasons. Um, and Honda, I looked at the rates last night, it's 3.7 at the moment in Swindon, the national average is 3.8. Uh, so it's about level with that at the moment. But um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think we're all going to ride the wave of this a little bit. Um, not just, this is pre-COVID you're talking about, I understand. Well, yeah, just, just only because I, I, you know, I remember speaking with a client six months or so ago and yeah. they have properties in Swindon and they were quite concerned yeah. because Honda was laying off thousands yep. of jobs. Yeah. Major employer in the area. Yeah, yeah they were, and they're, you know, they're continuing to do so. Mm. We, we, we are, I mean, if we were to look at the different demographics, um, the type of rooms that we're looking to put into this property here are fairly high standard and um, so we would expect maybe to be going for a slightly higher catchment in terms of uh, income level. Um, so back to John's point with regards to the figures, um, you know, they, they seem to stack up. Obviously the, the value is very much contingent on getting the 15 rooms. You know, that's a fifth of your value gone if you don't. Mm -hmm. With regards to um, the money you're looking to raise and what you're looking to give for it, uh, I'm sure that the others will come to this point. but. Um, to looking for 250 grand, which essentially is all of the investment capital 
Um, so all of the risk from the investor pretty well. Uh, not quite the, the 60 grand cost. extra there. Oh, oh, the 60 grand well, extra, yeah. sorry, yeah. I missed that. So we would cover the refurb costs yeah. to have some skin in the game. Okay. Um, that's would you be funding that with your own cash? Yes. Okay. Can I, do you mind leading Jump. on with the valuation? Yeah. Um, yeah. How do you calculate your investment valuation of 1.1 million? Can you talk me through that calculation, please? Yeah, that's yeah. A, yeah for I'm sure. not trying to put you on the spot, no, so no. I just want to understand <laughs> your thinking behind no, it. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's a conservative estimate based on 10 times the gross yield, so gross, gross rental income. And that's okay. a commercial valuation that we've been told would be realistic based on that property. Okay. Yeah, and, and using so some comparables as well, Swindon. Yeah. I think Helen will have something to say about that. Yeah, I mean, I've, 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 I've got something to say about that. It's not sure. generally how you value. You yeah. know, a value mm -hmm. would take your gross rent, mm -hmm. you would knock off a chunk of money um, for voids running, mm -hmm. stamp duty, purchases costs, um, that kind of stuff, maintenance yeah. and, and mm -hmm. voids and whatnot. So you'd probably knock off 20% of the gross rent, mm -hmm. and then you'd apply a, a yield based on that location. So typically in the Thames Valley, it's anything from 6 to 7.5% yield. The higher the yield, uh, the lower the valuation at the mm -hmm. end, essentially mm -hmm. in that calculation. Um, so, you know, based on a, a sort of a twenty percent deduction, gross to net, mm -hmm. and say a you know conservative seven percent yield, I think, you know, if your if your rents are correct, I think you've undervalued it on an investment valuation, which is good. Mm -hmm. um, but that will depend on the rents, mm -hmm. and it will depend on a valuer in that town yeah. what, what what yield they're prepared to apply. They might go no Swindon. It's not as good as you know Reading or Maidenhead or somewhere a little bit closer to town. So it's maybe get Reading mentioned at some point. seven and a half percent <laughs> rent. Happen to have a bulk of my portfolio down the road in Reading. So, yeah, very good. Um, but I know Swindon will be valued not as strongly. So yeah. I think probably mm -hmm. seven, maybe seven and a half percent. So you're not a million miles away, but okay. there might be some extra in there. Um, pleased, pleased to hear that. You're being safe. Conservative, yeah. conservative yeah. aren't you? We like that. <laughs> we like that. Yeah, we like that. <laughs> I, I really like that answer. Uh, you know, uh, to be cautious I'm all, and, and uh, to be, you I'm know, all for conservative. under promise, over deliver, I'm, I'm, I'm all for Yeah, that. no, I like that. I, I, no, I totally agree. But, Mike, um, have you run these numbers on 12 versus 15 units? We've run them on 14 versus 15. Um, for, for the HMO licence, we're contingent to maybe have a, a, an extra kitchen on the first floor um, if they require that. We've got two, two kitchens going in, well one going in extra to the one that's there, but we may have to put another kitchen on the first floor, which would, would lose a room for that. So we've done 14, we haven't gone back down to 12 um, to answer your question. Um, well but that's your worst case isn't it? You've got to, you've absolutely got to do that. Which yeah. is what we're, what we're yeah. at at the moment planning wise mm. isn't it? So yeah. Right. Ranjan, if it's not in a conservation area it's not going to be listed, or it's unlikely to be listed Nicholas. Could but be anyway. in a conservation area and Ranjan. not be listed. Not often. No. You've been very quiet for a change. It's not like you. <laughs> no, I, I think um, um, I, I'm, I'm a bit concerned about the rent levels. Um, the, it's, it's the net rent levels. Um, once you've taken into account voids, I think HMOs are going to be challenged over the next few years and occupancy levels will be challenged. There's a lot of cost in terms of management and also the changeover. Um, but also the utilities. I mean, we do a lot of HMOs uh, in London, but we've done separate um, utility. We've actually configured the electric individual supply for each room, so they're responsible for their own bills. Um, and it just gets rid of a huge amount of cost, uh, because then it just becomes uh, the Bahamas in terms of room temperature, and if you go around these places to visit. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm worried about we'll the, to go to the actual rent, <laughs> rent that we're going to realise okay. over the next few years. I mean, to be honest with you, I think it's the planning permission. We're, we're entering into a time now where um, there's so much that it can be done with permitted development, mm -hmm. and you seem to be picking a project that there's a battle you, to yeah, fight when to, there's To be fair, so Ranjan, you stuff. are a bit obsessed with PD rights. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, not everybody is, you know. Um, if someone else is doing a building, uh, say under PD, yep. in a similar vicinity, so they might take an office building or some space above um, shops or something like that, and they may configure that into lots of individual units with en suites, but they will be done as individual units with planning permission. Yeah. So therefore, it won't be considered an HMO. It would never need a license. They'd all have individual bills. Um, and their um, net profit per room will be much higher than yours. So they would be able to compete in a different way to yours. We'll get back to the video in just a moment. But what I wanted to really tell you about was 
what is the most exciting opportunity in property right now, and that is repurposing defunct commercial buildings to residential use. Now, most people don't really know where to start, what to look for, and how to exploit these opportunities, and that's why I've prepared 90 minutes of free training for you to get you started on this wonderful journey. You can register for this free training at property-workshop.com. Join me on that free training, and I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of the video. I think, yeah, gonna... I think we've got to the point where Nicholas will go on all day if we let him. And I think we've got <laughs> to the point where we need to start making some decisions. Would you want to go first on this? Yeah, can do. Um, Keep it brief. Yeah, I'll be very brief and to the point, like I said, Antipodeans are good for. Um, I don't right. even know what that means. Go on. <laughs> Australians and New Zealanders. I learned oh, no, that. No, I learned yeah. something. <laughs> um, okay. Um, location doesn't do it for me. I'm big on location, and I, I think that you know that when when someone mentions location, the first thing I think of is something negative. Then that's probably not for me. Um, uh, you know, I think it seems to be the biggest you guys have done. You haven't quite indicated what sort of equity you're giving away, but I would have thought that if one, well, if I was coming in to to put in that sort of money into it, I'd be taking full control of it and taking the vast majority of the profit. I think I'd like to say that I think you guys are very investable, and I'd love to work on a project with you guys. It's just that this deal is not really the type of deal that I um, want to go for. Personally, I think there are easier deals to be had for you guys um, to get more return. Uh, I think there's just a bit too many moving parts for me. If this was a deal that you were gonna look at, would you look at more the keeping it as the current use class? Um, I would like to explore that. Yeah. Uh, and I'll tell you why I want to explore that because you have surety of cash flow. Um, you've got one tenant, basically, the state, and you've got yeah. surety of cash flow, and your net rent, will, I guarantee, would be higher than with the private sector model. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, why did the previous guys pack up? Yeah. Yeah. Was it, because sometimes, particularly with old buildings, it's because they couldn't bring it up to regulations, because something had changed in the regulatory environment, Good which point. meant they couldn't bring it up to the spec, uh, to keep it running so they decided to sell it on. So you just need to explore why the previous occupants packed up, yeah. whether there was no demand or whether the building wasn't up to scratch. Both of you are very investable, um, very likeable, which is so, so important. Um, uh, and Cam, you're horsey, so I'm horsey, <laughs> so that, trainer, that's right? another tick. tick. <laughs> My wife will love you. <laughs> uh, more than me, probably, but anyway. Um, okay. So, um, I like you, I'm not terribly keen on the deal, I'm not a great HMO man. The gentleman at the end is a much more HMO man than I am. Um, I would like to keep in touch with you because I think, like Ranjan said, um, there's a lot of potential here, you're bright, you're intelligent, um, and I just don't think this is the right deal. Um, and like Ranjan said, if, we can, if you could get a local authority to take or, 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 or you know, someone funded by the local authority, then I think that's the way to go. A lot easier, a lot more simply for you. Mm -hmm. I know yeah. you're local and, and you know the area. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, so today, I'm not going to invest, but I'd like to keep in touch with you. I'd like to see what else you come up with. Thank you very, Thank you very much. I echo what the chaps have said about you both being investable. I particularly like the, uh, you know, kind of being down to earth and being realistic on your numbers. Where I question the realism is the refurb costs, and we've touched on if you had to have an ad, ha, had to add a kitchen, for example, on the second floor, then that's your, your eight, eight, eight k contingency is, is definitely gone there. So I do think maybe you need to look a little bit more like that. I question if it's the right deal for me because you are stepping up in this, and I love that ambition. HMO again isn't my thing. So how much can I add to you to this value? So it's not for me. But thank you so much and beautifully presented. Thank you. For thank you very much. Very professional. You're looking at it. Last one. Last <laughs> man standing. <laughs> hey, <laughs> crikey, it's tempting. Because of my expertise, we've got over 200 rooms in the Thames Valley, or units, I should say. Um, we do a lot of office to residential conversions. And, uh, you know, it, it's almost like a, potentially a diamond in a rough here. Um, my, my concerns with it are the location. I echo that slightly. And thus, the rent level, it seems high. You know, I'm getting 650 for an ensuite room in Reading. So can you get that 
in Swindon. I'm not convinced. I, okay. You're smiling and I appreciate you've done your research. Um, yeah. I haven't done this level of research mm -hmm. in, in Swindon, Swindon. So I'd like to you know, know that for sure. Um, the, the diamond in the rough is that I think you know, if you can get the 15 rooms, um, then you'll get a higher valuation if those rents are correct. Okay. Um, okay. Which means we could potentially bridge this, refinance it within six months, and I wouldn't have to put much money in. Um, and if it worked, great. And then you guys could, you know, go off and, and run it uh, and do something. I'd like to see you guys running it more as well, I think. I think you've got to, in your first few deals, you've got to be more hands-on. Sure. Okay. I don't like the fact you want to hand this to an agent. I've never seen an agent handle a 15-bed HMO well. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Okay. So that, you're just going to lose a huge amount of income from that. Um, they're going to be huge voids and uh, problems. Uh, you'll go back in after a year and see holes in ceilings from water that no one's picked up on and all, all sorts of problems. Sure. I think um, so they're very local, it is a possibility we could definitely Definitely need to get more hands on with yeah. it, I would say. At yeah. least initially. Yeah. Um, if this was an office to resi conversion and you could get 20 studios out of it, it would be a no-brainer. Uh, what? I think I it's Nicholas, I don't see why you're... Uh, I'm obsessed with this office to, office to resi. <laughs> <laughs> because you can get all student, like Ran, Ran, Ran Jan said, day, you can get all... It's a nice building, it's close to where yeah, you I are. Yeah, I agree. You, you don't know. have to deal with those pesky planners. Okay, look, no, I understand. Here, here's where I'm going to go with it. I'm going to make you an offer. You might not like it. I'm going to make you an offer based on you getting planning for the 15 rooms, though. That's got to be critical, we're getting the offer subject to that. Because without that, we're at 12 rooms, the value's not even going to be at that. Mm -hmm. It okay. just won't work. You know, the, the deal won't work. And then, you know, we'll probably work through that together. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And I've saved you, you know, losing your shirt on your first deal, which is, which is going to be key. Um, so bringing that expertise on a, on a, you know, bridge refi, whatever we're going to do here. Um, and the planning is going to be critical. It's a big build up, Nicholas. Um, I, I think we'll, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll offer you all the money. Um, but in an equity partnership, I'd want... 65% of the profit for that because I think my expertise in this sector in this area is going to be critical to you getting this deal done full mm -hmm. stop mm -hmm. um, and that's a lot more than I'd probably want to give away because I could do this deal myself mm -hmm. um, if I wanted to mm -hmm. but I would like to work with you guys and I echo what the guys have mm, said you're definitely. highly investable you're intelligent guys you're driven mm -hmm. I'd love to work with you I'd love to mentor you through this process mm -hmm. um, yeah, and for the first one I think that mentoring is going to be quite a steep learning curve for you guys, um, and that's okay. why the offer is where it is at. So, okay. Okay. Well, so yep. do you want to have a little yes, conflab somewhere? In, in the, <laughs> and then, and then uh, okay. talk to the back yeah. of the wall? Talk to the back <laughs> of the wall together <laughs> and just uh, to come back to us. <laughs> uh, firstly, thank you all for your advice and thank you. insights. It's been very helpful. Yeah, we, um, we came in um, today, as, a, as you saw, we were originally looking at debt finance as for, for, to, to fund this. Um, we've now moved to an equity position um, on it and, and hopefully mentorship and input from, from, from yourself. And we didn't really want to go above a third. We thought a third, third, third sounded pretty good. Uh, there's, there'll be three people in the, in the deal. Um, and so we, it's a lot, it's half of what you've offered. Um, would you be interested in going a third, third, third? No, no, no chance. That's what, 30, 33% rather than 65%? Yeah. No, I wouldn't be prepared to go anything like that, I'm afraid, guys. So given that, um, we've just readjusted our ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> that was our ceiling. And, mm -hmm. um, but we wouldn't want to give away a controlling share um, so feel that if we went to 49%, um, that would be our top. Well, I, I'm, not, I'm not looking to control your business. I wouldn't necessarily want to be the controlling party. So it's more of a shareholding. It's more of a share of the profit. So if we could structure the deal to be the share of the profit rather than the control of the business mm -hmm. through a shareholders agreement, would that be of interest? I'm really just interested in the profit, to be honest. I, I don't want to run your business. I want you to run your business. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, we understand that. I'll, I'll oversee it and give you advice, of course, and mentor you through that. It's, it's, it's difficult to um, run a business that you don't make the most profit out of. Um, I've learned that firsthand yeah. in my experience. Um, it becomes demotivating 
Sure. Um, you guys have a day job, right? So this was a, a part-time hobby, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, this is the aim to move into this full-time, though, 100%. Okay. So we've got to wrap hobby. it up, okay. guys. So what's okay. the answer? Okay. No guts, no glory. So, yeah. Remember that. So would you come down to 60%? I, I, I admire your tenacity. <laughs> come on, Nicholas. We've, we've come a long way. Up. I'd, I'd do 62.5%. Oh. <laughs> If this goes well, I'd love to work with you guys long term. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Commercial conversions and things are on our radar. Yeah, HMOs, so. commercial conversions. Yeah. There's lots of PD rights coming out now, so there's going to be lots of available stock, mm. um, lots of exciting opportunities. Mm, definitely. OK. Yeah. OK, I think we yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. All right. Thank goodness yeah. for that. Well done. <laughs> awesome. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> OK, guys, so did we get a deal? Yes, we did. Yeah. yeah, we're really pleased. Brilliant. Um, we got funding from Nick, Nicholas, um, and we're really looking forward to working with him moving forward. Excellent. So what did you go in and offer and what did it end up becoming? We kind of went in with a, um, a sort of a ceiling or an idea that we could maybe be equal partners in this deal, so third, third, third. Um, and uh, of course, being the savvy investors that they are, they come in pretty high. Okay. And, uh, or at least Nicholas did. Um, but we waited, we waited up and we talked to the wall a couple of times actually and um, decided that if we leave this on the table and walk away then we're going to be walking away from a, a lot of experience. That's it, and yeah uh, absolutely. And if, if nothing else it, it'll be a, a wonderful learning experience and he's already came up to us straight after and has given us so much you know, clean information. Really? That, yeah, just looking at floor plans and stuff. So How exciting. We're, we're delighted but yeah it was 62.5%. Six, Okay. Of profits, so we're just going to structure it that way. Okay. Yeah, Brilliant. It was, a, it was a great um, just being in a room of all the angels as well. Mm -hmm. um, they each gave their thoughts and insights on the project, which was really good to get. Good. So a lot of tips and a lot of feedback. Yeah. A lot of experience in that room. Excellent. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Thank you and very I much. hope it goes really well for you both. So in that analysis, we talked a lot about permitted development and how, if it was an say an office to residential conversion, it would be so much more of a slam dunker. Well. That is a fantastic strategy which I talk a lot about and if you want to find out more about converting um, defunct commercial buildings into alternative uses using a light touch planning regime called permitted development then I'm running a series of 90 minute free uh, masterclasses online. So if you want to register for one, the next one of those you can do so at the link below. See you guys in the next video.